Hello, my name is Diana Lopez. Uh, I'm thrilled to be with you here at the Art Museum of South Texas uh, in celebration of this year's Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, I'm a local author born and raised in Corpus Christi. And what I wanna talk to you about today is how growing up in Corpus Christi um, has, uh, you know, my experiences have found their way into my books, especially my experiences as a Mexican American growing up in this town. Uh, I've written several books. I have a total of eight published books, and here I'm showing you some of my titles. Uh, I have a book called Confetti Girl that takes place in Corpus Christi. Uh, I have a book called Ask My Mood Ring How I Feel, and another one called Nothing Up My Sleeve. Uh, and I was also invited uh, by Disney to write the novel adaptation of um, the Disney Pixar film Coco. So I wrote a book called Coco, a story about music, shoes, and family. Uh, and I have a book called Lucky Luna. And uh, my latest title is actually my first picture book and my first biography, and it's called Sing With Me, the Story of Selena Quintanilla. Um, but my very, very first book was published in 2002, uh, and it's a book called Sophia Saints. It's a book that takes place in Corpus Christi, and Corpus Christi is very much uh, a character in this book. So I thought what I'd do first was just share with you some of the images from, you know, from my environment that have made their way into this story. And just kind of keep in mind this was written in the late 1990s when I was writing it. My characters don't have cell phones, which I think is kind of funny because everybody has a cell phone <laughs> today. Um, so I grew up Catholic and my parents were always taking me, you know, to church and I was all these saints imagery and, and I loved the stories of the saints. And so a lot of this saint imagery made its way into my book. I'm just going to read you the very first paragraph. I draw with fire. After all, isn't it in fire and through fire, the fire of that strange bush that will not be consumed? through which God speaks his one absolute truth, I am who I am. My fire is not so mystical, is no more than the hot iron tip of a pyroelectric pen. I burn my own interpretations of the saints into the wood. Saint Anne, Saint Dominic, Saint Jude, instead of the blazes of hell, Saint Lucifer stands in the oil refinery flames that stink up the edges of Corpus Christi. Instead of a child on his back, St. Christopher carries the Harbor Bridge and the Intercoastal Highway. Here in the musty building of the Trade Center Flea Market, my wood burnings hang on the walls of my best friend's booth for sale. And so I really enjoyed taking images of the saints and kind of reinterpreting them from a Corpus Christi uh, perspective. Um, Kind of in keeping with this, uh, you know, Catholic imagery that I grew up with, uh, La Virgen de Guadalupe was a really important uh, figure in my growing up, and I love the sto her story as well. And one of the interesting things is you're always, you always see La Virgen. You see her on people's t-shirts, and they, they wear little medallions with her. Uh, they, they have her tattoos, <laughs> you know, or they have murals of La Virgen. And so when I was thinking about this book, a, a big part of this book is about art. And, uh, and the character um, works at a restaurant that has a mural of La Virgen uh, on the outside wall. So I'm going to read you a little excerpt about that. Pete's place is near the Emerald Beach Hotel and Spawn Hospital. It's a two-story building with the restaurant on the first floor and Pete's family living on the second. Facing the parking lot is a mural of La Virgen de Guadalupe, her image no different from what I've seen in all the books, a blue cape with stars, brilliant sun spokes radiating behind her, a child peeking beneath her red robe's hem, and plump Mexican cherubs floating in the sky. There are sheets of rain on my windshield, and La Virgen seems to tremble on the other side. Another thing that I really enjoyed about growing up in Corpus Christi were the um, parades for Buccaneer Days and things like that. Uh, and I love looking at the floats and all of the different kinds of queens, you know, with their robes and their crowns. 
Uh, and so I imagined when I was writing this book, uh, I imagined a sandia queen, one of my characters at one time being a sandia queen. I don't know if there really was a sandia queen, uh, but I do remember uh, the trucks that would come into town and park at you know, empty parking lots with a, a bunch of watermelons in the back for sale. So I always remember these sandias. Uh, and so my character, um, her name is Chimuelita because she lost all her teeth. <laughs> And my, my main character, Sophia, is, has just asked her how she met her husband. And this is what Chimuelita has to say. I met him at a parade the year I was a Sandia queen. I wore a crown shaped like a piece of watermelon, red sequins glued all over it. And there was Pete and two buddies. Right away they started fighting over me. I don't know why. I knew them from school and all they ever did was make fun of my flower sack dresses. They wanted to take me out, but my father said that no respectable girl would date three boys at a time. I had to choose and quit too, because I knew they were in love with my watermelon crown, and the rule said you could be the Sandia queen only once. I prayed. I asked La Virgen for a sign, and the next day there it was, a chicken a real chicken in a tree. Chickens don't fly, and this one had grown up in my yard without ever looking at the sky. That chicken was red, and there was Pete with red hair. I plucked off a feather and gave it to him just to make sure the magic didn't wear off. Now we're married. Now I feel like the Sandia Queen all the time. Um, also, when I was uh, living here in Corpus Christi, we had Bayfest, you know, and I loved going to Bayfest because it was a chance to look at people's arts and crafts and their quilts. Uh, but one of the things that uh, frequently was featured at Bayfest were the ballet folklorico dancers. Uh, so I have ballet folklorico dancers at Bayfest in my book. And uh, let me share a little bit with you. And just uh, this is from my main character's voice, Sophia. And sometimes she's a little bit dark about things. But this is Sophia looking at the ballet folklorico dancers at Bayfest. I go with Julian to Bayfest. We stop before a stage to watch children dance in ballet folklorico costumes. All those petticoats. The girls' lashes are mascara thick and their hair in tight ribboned braids. Sometimes I think love should be as clean and as uncomplicated as those dancers. The girls on stage stomp and whirl their skirts to Jalisco's festive notes, and they snub the little boys who circle them with their hats clutched behind their backs. No one holds hands. It's all very genteel. 